Natalie, she is playing that Gardevoir EX. And Andrew playing that Arceus V-Star, Giratina V-Star. Still using Giratina, but with a whole different package. Yeah, we just saw Giratina V-Star featured by Cal, but this combination with Arceus features a different V-Star ability, a different setup, different way to power up Giratina, and a much more reliable way, if you will, but also a much more resilient way with the Arceus V-Star having a lot more HP than something like Comfy. Yeah, so the early game is a little bit more structured for this deck and it can afford to play a lot more disruption in general. Natalie, one of the best players out of Australia and the Oceania uh, region in general. She is looking to kind of lock up that day two spot for OC, uh, the OC region. Meanwhile, Andrew Nyson, I was trying to remember where I remembered him from. And then I remembered about this trophy that happened at the end of Team Challenge 4. He is a Team Challenge champion. Oh. And also a semi-professional bodybuilder. But. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, Team Challenge, a pretty cool event that we had when we couldn't have local events. A great way to represent your local game store and pretty fun event to do. Natalie also winning the first Players' Cup, I believe. Yeah another online event that we had, which uh, was one of the first that we had in that online circuit of 2020. Taking a look at the prize cards here, a Ralts and a Curlia, along with the Rare Candy and two Psychic Energies. Could be a little harmful for this game. You know, Andrew has a couple of E-Stars in the prize cards, and that's Squavit. Nestash has been put to a lot of use in this Arceus uh, Giratina deck. Indeed, COVID has been integral to our Giratina winning a regional championship. That one extra card, and um, it was definitely one of the highlights from that event. Uh, but it's the equivalent of just drawing that one last card of the research and hitting that game winning card, uh, being the second card of the flower selecting from Comfey. So uh, there's definitely merit to COVID, and it has a lot of synergy with Fibril, which is a fantastic support Pokemon. It's looking like Andrew is starting things off, having that Arceus V in the active spot, attaches a V Guard energy to it, and that's all you really need for an Arceus deck. Your Arceus and energy. Next turn is when things start to get a little bit of pressure. Yeah, you generally can't hope for anything better. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of other things you would want in your hand, but if you, the bare minimum is Arceus plus energy. Without that, you're going to be immediately behind, as opposed to something like Natalie's deck, that wants to play those battle VIP passes, establish those routes as quickly as possible to then get into Kirlia, to then get into Guard of War. So we have the two uh, polar opposites, I will say, one very aggressive deck since the very beginning and another sort of passive deck at the beginning that only gets stronger as the game advances. Natalie has a pretty strong start here. She concealed cards, drew two cards, found that battle VIP pass. Now with that, we'll be able to grab that Ralts and Mew. Mew has been one of the more important Pokemon to find on turn one for these Gardevoir decks. Yeah, Mew lets you dig deeper into the deck to find that extra Battle VIP pass, that level ball to establish your Curlia, that Fog Crystal to grab that extra Ralts as we are seeing right now. So um, you wouldn't prefer that over a Ralts most of the time, but it's very nice when you get to start with it. And some starts, some starting hands definitely merit the possibility of a two prize, uh, two Pokemon uh, with the Battle VIP pass, right? It's never guaranteed, but the possibility is definitely going to be worth it. And that's exactly what we see the Mysterious Tail. Top six, and there it is. Wow. <laughs> Three Battle VIP pass. Must be nice, but hey, we got what we wanted. Two more basic Pokemon going down on the bench. Most likely two Ralts. Yeah. I'd get as many as those as possible. One Ralts is priced for Natalie, so not going to really um, search for an extra Pokemon here. Cresillian not going to be very good against Arctina. Uh, the Station will be very good, but it needs to be set up uh, later. And um, if you establish it now, then you can't really power it up because you're going to damage it with Gardevoir EX. If it gets boss KO'd by an Arceus, it won't get KO'd, sorry. But it will be damaged, and then you can't get those nine energies that you need in order to get a KO. 
Natalie finishes off the turn with that third waltz from the hand, and Andrew has that Arceus V-Star. This is going to open up a little bit more play for Andrew here. And Star Birth grab a double turbo energy, which seems like he is lacking. You can also judge your Iono first. Yeah, I would definitely recommend the, the judge as you get to limit Natalie set up. Although I guess Natalie doesn't have more than four cards, so maybe you hold you can, off. You can boss his orders. Yeah, you could. Knock definitely out better. Waltz. Knock definitely. out the Radiant Greninja, maybe? Yeah. I mean, with four paths to the peak in your True. deck, you probably can't afford to let the Greninja there. Uh, Greninja is very important and very good for the deck, but Gardevoir decks usually don't want to immediately counter path. They want to counter path once they're going to use Gardevoir EX to power up something big. And that's not going to happen too, too early, as Natalie does need to get those energies into a discard pile beforehand. So perhaps a back of attacker to power up, a nest ball to thin the Pokemon that you want to power up, or just grabbing the Pokemon directly. Either way, uh, many ways this could go for if Natalie had a stronger start, if she had played a supporter, for example, and had like six, seven cards in her hand, then the judge play would be a lot more sensible. I'm playing the judge before you V star, that way you see what you get, and then you decide what you're missing. Well, double turbo energy is definitely one of the cards. You need that to attack, and it looks like Nest Ball is going to be the other grab. Now, with the Nest Ball, do you just go straight for that Giratina V so you can set it up for a potential Gardevoir EX, or do you just get an Arceus, maybe try to play in some Charon's Cares? Yeah, I think the, the Arceus is definitely the way to go. You know you're not going to be immediately KO'd. Um, having consistent back-to-back -back attacks. Even a boss onto a Giratina would be awkward because you don't want to take uh, KO on a single price Pokemon by loss zoning two energies. You also don't want to pay that hefty retreat cost of two energies, even though you could. Uh, energies in play is a very important thing to have as the Arctina player, and you really, really want to make sure that it won't, um, it won't affect you in the late game. Yeah, there, energies are a finite resource, and therefore you need to keep them as available as you can. Still debating the supporter for the turn here. Already attached that double turbo energy. So and it's a choice. Uh, oh. All right, no supporter. Yeah, no supporter. Even had the boss in hand already, too. So, yeah, I mean, I dev with the boss in hand, I'm pretty sure I would have preferred to knock out a Ralts, um, but... Here we have Andrew uh, deciding differently, so we'll have to see if this ends up affecting like the rest of the game. Yeah, having being one rails down right now, it's not going to be super, super impactful. But based on how your opponent played out their turn, you might have an inkling that one rails is priced, right? And all of a sudden, with Guard is only playing with two refinements, then their card axis is a lot lower as well. Natalie does have a level ball here. Search for that Curlia. Get some refinement going. Yeah, start getting those energies into a discard pile. Very crucial. No energies in hand just yet. But yeah, both disorders hitting the discard pile. This is not a match where you're going to hunt down Sorry. something specific, especially when you're like playing more defensively in the beginning, just trying to establish yourself and trying to set up. There is another Curlia. So refinement will keep the train moving here. Still needing to find a lot of energy. Discard the Zacian V and did find a Psychic, so we can conceal the cards, draw a little bit more. Try to get a little better of a setup here. I do want to mention how it's... Um, if you are paying attention to the metagame, to the trends, to the online tournaments that do happen daily, uh, to tournaments from the other side of the world, then you would expect only one Zacian V as a standard in Card of War list. So seeing that station in the discard pile could give Andrew a false sense of security. Yeah, not fully expecting another one before a super. There's always the possibility that a super gets played, the station gets recovered, but that's another key card that Nali will no longer have access to, that way to remove the path to a peak from play. Ooh. Does find a rare candy Gardevoir EX though. And with the fog crystal. Uh, mm, that's enough to retreat, charge up that Gardevoir, deal 190 damage maybe? Yeah, and it's not a bad choice with no Giratina in play. Uh, you know you're never getting return KO. 
you also soften up the arc so don't you, so you don't need a million energies on your shining arc and a guard of war you only need to hit for 150 with the three so pretty good start pretty good start and andrew might be thinking he should have played either the boss right which would have limited one refinement or the judge to maybe change natalie's hand at that point and there is that psychic embrace six damage on that guard of war ex but three psychic energy from the discard to the active and miracle force 190 damage that is enough to two hit ko and arceus v-star natalie has a game plan and has executed it pretty well so far these first couple of turns yeah well certainly it does feel like andrew could have made his first turn a little bit more um, aggressive both in terms of attacking the hand or attacking the board mew is of course really good but it's not essential to the deck and you you very rarely expect it to actually survive more than a turn if you went second so um whereas one less refinement that that carries on for the rest of the game and andrew is now eyeing the boss's orders into the curlia to take this ko limits the hand right but no guillotine established means guard of war ex is at no peril at all yeah andrew just having nothing for that turn uh no guillotine like you've been saying but not even an arceus v star to continue attacking does find the squavit maybe maybe uh that uh nestash can find uh the, the card needed but we'll have to see yeah nestash could give you the game winning card but it feels like there's like five game winning cards that Andrew <laughs> needs at this point and Squabbit is good but not that good. Hey, you don't know that. All right. That's true, that's true. It is a future. regional winner. All right, Shining Arcana from that Gardevoir finds two more cards to Natalie's hand. And then she plays the Super Rod here, putting back that Zashian V along with that one one Curlia that was knocked out last turn. Establishes the Sashen and the Ralt. Uh, really surprised that that's getting benched already. But once again, with no Giratina, there's no threat. You know exactly how much damage your opponent is doing 180 or 200. Yeah? Sashen could get boss KO'd with a choice build, but you've seen your opponent not even evolve, right? If he had a Narcus V Star, he would have evolved for sure. Last turn, and we see the Iono. Yeah, I think we see the Zashian V here just for the fact that Natalie wants to use that four seal stone, possibly, uh, depending on how this Iona turns out, depending on how next turn will turn out, just having access to any card in your deck is pretty great, especially with a card like Path of the Peak being played in the full four in Andrew's deck. Uh, both players with um, a lot of four of counts. Yeah, both yeah. players playing four Iono. Um, we'll have to see what Andrew drew here. Natalie tying up the prize cards, not really threatened by an unevolved Arcus V. And with the hand that she currently has, has a lot of energies in her hand, has a way to retreat, has the boss's orders to chase down a potential Giratina, which is realistically the only Pokemon that threatens her at this point in time. Andrew does use Ultra Ball, discards Ultra Ball V Guard energy to find that Arceus V star, but only has just an Arceus V and a path Ooh. to the peak. There's Trinity Nova, 200 damage, not enough to take the knockout. And you can charge at the Arceus V on the bench, but it is not looking good for Andrew here. It really isn't. It does feel like a missed opportunity to hunt down Akurlia in the first turn, then disrupt the hand in the following turn. He did it, but one turn too late. And now he's just flying with her setup. A ton of damage on that Gardevoir EX, but Right, that doesn't matter too, too much. Uh, now, what really matters is how many energies are available for her. Two in the discard, three on the active. One on that Gardevoir on the bench. Here's a worker. Plays two of those cards. Draw three, discard the stadium. Second copy of worker coming into play, plus extra card advantage. It's one of the benefits of playing worker as a two of. I think, once again, Andrew uh, would be caught off guard by that second copy if you're paying attention to the uh, tournament results from Asia. Then one worker is a standard, definitely not two. And I think this first heal stone, yep, an Ultra Ball, 
to make sure you have enough energies in the discard pile. Your attachment from hand can go to the Gardevoir. And then you have the six energies to use your single prize attacker to take two prizes. It really doesn't get much better than that. Even adding another Curlia on top of it, finding it with that Ultra Ball. Be able to discard another energy, draw two cards here. And it is looking like Natalie has the knockout lined up. And almost for sure we're going to move into a game two pretty soon here. Yeah, uh, Natalie even has the possibility to play a collapse, retreat the Guard of Hurry X, power up, play a collapse stadium, and get that liability out of there. And then even if your opponent goes boss kill the Curly and you don't have Guard of Hurry X anymore, that doesn't matter because your Guard of War already has all the energies that you could possibly ever need to take a KO on the next Arcus V Star. So, creating these once again checkmate scenarios that we continue to see. Andrew could play N at this point in time, and that wouldn't <laughs> help him. <laughs> there is that brain wave, plenty of damage taking the knockout, and just one card off the top. Uh, Looking like a nest, nest ball. ball for Squavit. I like I like I like this. There it is. Or you can't even use Nestash. You don't have a card in hand. You oh, can put a card true. on the bottom. That's true. So then that's it, right? I mean, I guess you get, you get, you get the knockout. You get the knockout. Then Zashin and then comes up Zashin and goes boom. Up. Yep, indeed. Um, please, yeah, yeah you can't yeah. use Covid, and, and that uh, should be the game. We're gonna Nestash in the game two. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go first. I'll, that's, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an attack on Arcus V, but that is an option. Well, it's only an option if you lose uh, or win the flip. That's true. Yeah, that's no true. first ticket anymore. Like no first ticket, point. no. No longer legal. How long? To yeah, how, like, that's a 10-year-old card? <laughs> 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 Listen, we're old, okay? Uh, we got to do something to show our age a little bit. Yeah. We? <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm older than you are. <laughs> How old are you? I am 35 years old. Oh, yeah, you're older than me. How old are you? 31. 31, okay. Yeah. yeah. Natalie Miller taking that first game in pretty divisive fashion. Uh, Andrew after, what, the Iono? Or just not able to draw anything, didn't have any supporter, and just a couple Arceus against the world of Gardevoir, not able to take it down. As a, as a rule against Gardevoir, you want to knock out the Ralts, you want to knock out the Kirlias. Maybe Andrew valued knocking out a Kirlia more than a Ralts, but you limit your opponent to two Ralts when they start a turn, that's only two refinements, right? Or one if they choose to rear candy into the Gardevoir X. That probably means less aggression, right? And Giratina is something you need to set up. Yeah, two, two Arcuses is pretty good. Um, Natalie did get a very explosive turn as a follow-up to her turn one. Uh, but overall, yeah, you need something that threatens the big damage. Otherwise, Natalie and Gardevoir EX in general, um, you're not getting KO'd. Your Pokemon become very cost-effective as you have essentially unlimited energy. Looking at the hand for Andrew, does have an energy to go along with the nest ball. So, turn one attachment on an Arceus V. That's where you want to be. And then Ultra Ball for the V Star next turn. We're just going to have to see how Andrew navigates the, the kind of awkward matchup that you have against this Gardevoir EX deck. Really able to, once it gets set up, just take one shot after one shot on any of your Pokemon. Yeah, and that's exactly what you need to stop, right? That's where the four copies of Fat Foot P come into play. That's where the four copies of Judge and four copies of Iono should come into play. Three copies of Judge, pardon me. But overall, you need to be disrupting, right? Boss is another way to disrupt. But um, other than turn one, or turn two rather, it's not going to be super easy to pull that off. Again, checking through the deck to see what cards are prized. We'll see a couple bosses orders prized that uh, one of Choice Spell, which could potentially uh, come in depending, but I, I really only think that if Natalie starts the Zashian V or something. Yeah. yeah, and then even with a Choice Belt and a double turbo, you wouldn't get the KO on the Zashian. You would need a fully powered up, uh, clean Arcus V. Uh, the Cleansing Gloves does come into play a little bit more. 
as Giratina V-Star can get that plus 30 boost to hit for 310, which is coincidentally exactly how much HP Guard of War EX has. That is very late into the game, but is something that we could end up seeing. V-Guard on that Arcus V and a pass of the turn for Andrew. Natalie is going to start things off with a Ralts on the bench, an energy to the active and an Iono. Not quite the start that we saw last game, but this six cards could find a little bit of help. Battle VIP pass, maybe. Yeah, these stay Fog Crystal, which could lead to Mew, which could lead to that Battle VIP pass. Now, I do have to wonder, there's double Fog Crystal, right? Do you go for Mew and a Ralts to have another chance at a Ralts? Or do you just go for the two Ralts directly? We have yeah. our answer. <laughs> Mew. Uh, as you were saying, uh, Mew has just been one of the powerhouse cards for the first turn of these Gardevoir decks. Uh, being able to Mysterious Tail to reach for even the level ball for next turn so you can get a Corellia and start refinements right away. Yeah, certainly. Mew definitely has its use. You don't expect it to survive beyond turn one. If it does, that should mean that a Ralts or a Curlia went down. Um, but yeah, it does have its uses. You definitely prefer to lose that over a Ralts, that's for sure. And if you do find Battle VIP Pass here, that allows you to establish the Greninja to draw a few extra cards as well, which is very important and also gets energy into a discard pile. So there is definitely merit to this. Um, neither card is better than the Ralts into the Curlias, but Given Natalie's a uh, little underwhelming hand, it might be necessary to establish that Greninja or try to establish it this turn. And I do like waiting uh, to use that second Fog Crystal for something like the Ralts, just in case you do find a Battle VIP pass, because then you just search the Ralts anyway, save the Fog Crystal for an energy so you can discard uh, it to concealed cards. Uh, unfortunately, no Battle VIP pass here in the top six. but a pretty good wealth of options. Ultra Ball, Level Ball, and Fog Crystal to go along with it. I like Level Ball here. Yeah, I definitely think Level Ball is the follow-up that Natalie needs, but with no supporter, um, that Fog Crystal will be used. Um, I'm going to play Devil's Advocate here and say that I definitely would have played the Fog Crystal uh, before the Mew, because you know you're going to need that Ralts. Even if you get a Battle VIP pass, you would still want like Ralts and Greninja. And uh, you thin your deck a little bit because your hand is so bad. Yeah, it's like it's generally not a very good hand at this point in time. And you need to maximize your chance of finding a Greninja or finding a Battle VIP pass into Greninja and two extra cards. So you value just getting that extra card out of the deck. Yeah, it, it like the deck is right now 40-ish cards, right? So one card is going to be 2.5%, right? But it's a small advantage, right? You continue to give yourself like those small percentages over the course of a game. All of a sudden, they start stacking up, yeah, and they they really do make a difference. It doesn't seem like it, but if you do these little things in the beginning, and at the end you have a ten card deck instead of a fifteen card deck, all of a sudden you're much more likely to hit that game winning boss, that game winning card at the end um, with such a small deck size. This is a huge turn for Andrew Ooh. here. Opted to attach the Psychic Energy to the Arceus V on the bench. Now it has two. That means if a V-Star comes down, you cannot use Trinity Nova. Is going to have to Trinity Charge for the turn. Plays down that path to the peak, and then a Judge. So four cards for Andrew here, four cards for Natalie. But you're not getting a knockout. Uh, it might be a little too slow. I am very surprised at this choice for sure. Uh, path to peak is stopping Sashen, but that's not an impactful ability at this point in time. I think stopping yourself here of not finding one of your seven outs for Arcus V-Star, the three you play, and the four ultra balls, definitely a little uh, underwhelming overall. Um, there's the b as well, so I don't know. I, I definitely don't. I think Andrew is valuing the path a little too much here. You need path the next turn, right? That's when you stop the card over. But maybe he he's considering the previous turn when Natalie just had like an explosive start, got the guard of REX going immediately and was able to apply pressure. So definitely that on his mind. But that was a different game, right? This is a new game. Natalie had a much slower start. Um, no Greninja in play. Not a humongous hand size. I don't know. It, this feels, as you mentioned, not getting the KO is really putting yourself at essentially a turn behind. 
Now the industrious incisors from the barrel is going to be able to put in a little bit of work for this hand, help shape it a little better. Did find the ultra ball, yeah. but is going to have to wait till next turn potentially here. Just going to finish off with a Trinity charge. You can charge up that Giratina V on the bench, or even split the energy to one on the Giratina, one on the Arceus. Yeah, now you do know Natalie will eventually need to get rid of that path. So you will eventually have V-Star. So it's not a terrible trade-off, but one turn where you don't take a prize can be the reason you win or lose a game, right? So that could come back to bite him towards the end of the game. We'll have to see. Now Natalie gets an extra use of the Mew, uh, potentially finds those Kirlias, making the charge less impactful, but adapting a little bit from the first game, powering up that Giratina to make sure that he has a better response in case Natalie is able to find turn to card of war and starts attacking. Andrew does opt to split those energies, so Psychic and Grass on that Giratina V, Grass on that Arceus V, and then that two in the active spot. Natalie has access to Mysterious Tail till still for next turn, so can find something like that level ball, get some Curlia in play. Has one available to her already. But only one. Okay, so finds another level ball. The hand was pretty underwhelming um, without that Curlia. And we'll have to see if this Curlia can find an Iono uh, worker. There's no professor's research. Um, one of the reasons that not only might have pinched that Sasha is because now if you get a four seal stone that opens up a potentially good play. Um, very low on like actual draw power in Nali's version of Card of War. Clearly it's worked so far, but also I'm a bit nervous playing without Professor's Research. Sometimes it's just even a good resource to get energies into a discard pile. Clearly it's good, but it's not like perfect. Iono is still pretty good though if you're not going to be taking prizes early and Card of War is a deck that doesn't really do that unless they get a pretty stellar hand. The serious tale here, looking at the top six, trying to find an item. Battle VIP pass is not going to do it. Ooh, Level ball was the, the last, last card. <laughs> there he just we grabs go. the Curlia from the top six as well. Yeah, could have grabbed it with an Ultra Ball, but definitely that's a hefty price to pay um, as you're going to be discarding two cards and then you're going to be discarding another one for the Curlia, which sometimes that's good, right? But in this case, um, it would have been a little too harsh on Natalie's hand. I think did find the worker off that last refinement here. I don't think she did. I think it was a rare candy and this no. fog crystal. Yeah. We'll have to see. Um, I mean, worker's not essential right now. I think even if you do find it, you wouldn't play it because you get rid of the path and your opponent could play another one. I think uh, on the opposite side, if Natalie is aware of metagame trends, uh, past tournament results and whatnot, you have to expect four paths to a peak. Yeah. Yeah. Until you see otherwise, you have to play with the educated guess, if you will, that you're up against four paths to a peak in this game. There is a pass of the turn, though, so Andrew will get a chance to maybe get a Trinity Nova off, finally get that attack going. But you're staring down three Curlia on Natalie's side of the board. It'll be a little tough to beat that draw power. Now, one thing uh, like that could affect Andrew is he split his energies, right? But there's no third energy on the Arceus. And even though your deck is full of energies, you have a high chance at finding one, it's not guaranteed, right? There's nothing guaranteed in Pokemon. You have a high chance of doing so, but it's not 100% at this point. So it's going to be up to Bibral and its industrious and scissors to put in the work here and find that third energy. There's a squavit in the hand, too. Good <laughs> Nestash. Nestash after yeah. Industrious Incisors. Your, your faith in squavit is really something admirable. Your lack of faith is something that is disturbing. <laughs> disturbing. All right. Well, I mean, I just don't fancy the odds. <laughs> <laughs> Never tell me the odds. All right. There you see the first Industrious Incisors. One energy is all we need right now. Energy plus boss would be the ideal. And that's exactly what we found. Perfect. And that is pretty crazy, considering there's two bosses orders prized in this game, although Andrew does play four copies. And is able to boss his orders, bring up that Curlia. I guess 
you could maybe go for the Zacian and dig for the belt or gloves. The one belt is prized, so you'd just be digging for the gloves. Mm, possibly. Uh, but I feel like that would be a little tunnel visioned in a way. In yeah. like, I'm down one game, and I need to get prizes, right? Well, you're down one game, but you need to win the game. Yeah? And knocking out Aculia limits your opponent's draw power next turn, limits their possibilities of Guard of War EX evolutions later down the line. So I think this is something that we probably should have seen in the first game, and that could have altered the outcome of the game as well. Trinity Nova does take the knockout on Curlia, and there's only one basic energy left in the deck. It's going to have to go to that Giratina V, and Andrew is not out of energies. There's still double turbos and another V-Guard. I just think they're all in his hand, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a V-Guard in their hand. Uh, there's the prize, finally, being taken that choice belt, which is potentially useful at this point, right? Um, does need to find the other bosses' orders as two of them are prized, so it's going to be a little difficult, but potentially useful. Hey, with two B-Barrel and Squavit, anything can happen, you know? Especially this COVID yeah. could make that. We've seen crazier things, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> We've seen crazier <laughs> things on stream. Fog Crystal for Natalie does find a Psychic Energy, so you can build up those in the discard. Eventually, Guard of War EX is going to come down with that potential Path Bump. As Guard of War, you would love to get a knockout here, but it's also not super urgent. Yeah, being down to two price cards, or being down to price cards rather, gives you more than enough time to be able to pull off comebacks at this point, unless your opponent somehow somehow goes like KO and then boss boss your two uh, rule box Pokemon, which is easier said than done. Um, Andrew is pretty Iono proof, right? With the double VRL and the Squavit. Yeah, I'll give you that one. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but so is Natalie with the uh, Curlia usage. So getting a KO here would be fantastic. Not super likely. Now, if Natalie plays a Collapse Stadium, do you discard the Squavit or do you discard the second VRL? Uh, discard the Arceus V Star. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, it would probably be the Squavit. I'm not too sure, actually. I'm not too sure. Maybe there's merit to that second VRL, so you can continue to see uh, resources. Because the hand is quite clogged up, right? There's a lot of energies there. Uh, no, no Iono, I don't think. There is a Judge, right? But I don't know. I think at this point is when Scovid could be the most useful. What is it, Pablo? Judge or Iono? <laughs> it, it, there is actually Iono in the hand. I see it. Gardevoir with that Shining Arcana. Ooh, Able to up. find a double Iono for Natalie herself. Does have like, all four in hand. Is that is that what I'm seeing correctly? <laughs> At least be, yeah. three. At least three for sure. Now we okay, do see the, the four seal stone going to grab. The fourth one? <laughs> <laughs> Not so sure on that. Uh, Boss's orders probably target down the Giratina. You can take down with... Um, your regular card of war, not exposing your session, and this does mean that the path will not be will not be in play. And this does open up Andrew to utilize the restart. They could search for boss right um, in order to um, target down the session, but then the card of war stays alive and powered up. Yeah, there's the people. No, I hate when you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chooses to use Sasha to take the KO, though. I am actually generally surprised that choosing that over the Gardevoir, probably valuing the extra draw that Gardevoir can get um, during next turn, expecting an Iono, expecting a Judge. Uh, Sasha obviously doesn't help you in setting up your hand, finding resources, and if you expect Iono plus Path, right, which with the V-Star available is certainly a big possibility, then having the extra draw of Curlia and Shining Arcana will certainly help you pull back-to-back -back attacks. The issue is Gardevoir needs eight energy to knock out Arceus V-Star, and you can only power up six as you cannot, uh, you just do not have enough HP, right, to get eight. So one from hand, that's seven. How do you get that eighth energy on the Shining Arcana? By using Shining Arcana. Right, the yeah. Ho ho hope it's there. Uh, one thing with that boss's orders knockout on that Giratina V, 
It's pretty important because that's three basic energy in the discard pile. There's no super rod in the deck. No way to recover those energies outside of Raihan. Yep. Got a couple in the prize cards, but that basically shuts out Giratina V-Star from being able to attack for the game, which is huge. Yeah, I'm not even going to go ahead and bench another one. So now Andrew's damage output is once again um, limited, right, to what we are seeing at this point in time. And I'm not sure if he realizes that he can still V-Star. Uh, usually you get to this point after you V-Star, right? It's definitely not yeah. common to... Yeah to do this, um, and then we see the judge to four for both players. It's always the same amount. I don't know why I specified four, but... <laughs> hey, it's good to know. Pe people at home may not know what That's judge true. does. Yeah, four cards for each player. The decks do get shuffled, so the cards that you had before the judge, there is a chance that you redraw them, uh, which is different from Iono, right? And the advantage or disadvantage that that can uh, entail is definitely something uh, to consider when having the choice between both cards. Honestly, though, there's not really many cards that Andrew can draw here that are going to be good in this position outside of something like that Path of the Peak. Was not able to find it, but does have Starbirth used it, and that's the first card grab, that Path of the Peak. Yeah, it's all about trying to deny that card of War EX. Um, Andrew doesn't know how many outs to pass to a peak, not elite does play, but from the previous game, he does know that there's at least two worker and now a collapsed stadium, right? So it could be only that count. There could be more. Uh, Temple of Sinnoh, Artisan, even Champions Festival are some of the cards that can sometimes be seen in Carnivore of EX decks. I generally expected, I predicted Champions Festival to show up more, and we have yet to see one. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's your fault there. That is my fault, yes. I overestimated the card, apparently. Um, it's, However, I will say, if we were talking about getting that 8th energy onto the Shining Arcana Guard of War, that's how you do it, right? You get 7 from Psychic Embrace by healing that 10 damage, and then you attach the 8th for, uh, for turn, right? Finding it at the right time is the difficult part, but definitely something that could be done. There is the path to the peak, Trinity Nova. No energy to search for, but you got to take those knockouts when you can. And there's the worker. Immediately the worker. Yeah. Now. Put no. in work. <laughs> you're all about the puns, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, Shining Arcana does find a psychic energy. Yeah. So it attaches to the Gardevoir. That's how you get the eighth energy. Yeah, you just shine your arcana into it. You attach six, you attach for turn, and there's the eight. I um, feel like that happens very uh, casually and very easily. It's not something that will just miraculously happen every time you shine your arcana, but it worked out for Natalie this time. And she takes a knockout here. She establishes the station once again, uh, giving no indication that she has a second copy. And then it's all about Iono plus path, and can Natalie find another path to a B counter after that to close out the game? Level ball here is going to grab a Ralts. And with six in the discard, the one attached from Shining Arcana, that means just one more attachment from hand will be able to help Natalie take the knockout here. I believe she already had that energy um, in her hand, so she has everything she could possibly need, right? Right now, it's all about, okay, creating that sort of checkmate situation in order... Oh, wow, another energy of the Shining Organa. That's actually really impressive. That opens up the energy attachment to the other Shining Organa, which sets you up very nicely for a follow-up 8 energy, so you won't even need Station. I'm seeing double, Pablo. <laughs> I think I like it. There's the Psychic Embrace, attachment for turn into the card of war, setting that up. So not only one energy and a path to P counter away. I would love to see that level ball in her hand being utilized. Like, that's not going to be useful. Yeah, that's not going to be the game winning card potentially, unless she has another Kirlia and yeah, she gets shuffled back in with judged. Super Rod. Oh, there you go. All right. So then definitely married. But if you get Iono, then that level ball is already in the bottom of the deck, right? So you won't be able to use that to establish accurately, so 
we'll see. We'll see. Definitely in a uh, commanding position here for Natalie. And there is the Iono. No path to the peak just yet. Andrew is down to the last V-Star, the last attacker that he is able to use in this match. You know, the biggest issue for Andrew is that he can attach the V-Guard perhaps to make this Arceus as bulky as possible. He can Iono, he can find path, right? He can do all these things and takes one prize guard. There's no way to threaten the Guard of Oriac, so best case scenario, he wins in two more turns after this one, right? Whereas Natalie just needs to find any sort of way to counter the path to a peak and has two turns to do so after this Iono will have access to Shiny Arcana, possibly a refinement. And once she finds the second copy of Worker or the second copy of Collapse Stadium, that's it. Squava is getting in there, double turbo attached. Uh, now, just trying to thin the hand down before you play this Iona or Judge, depending. Bite for uh, zero damage. That's always great, right? Yeah. Probably not going to affect the game <laughs> at all. <laughs> but I'm still surprised that it wasn't the V-Guard attached to the Arcus V-Star just to make Sasha and Rikar nine energy instead of eight. And then maybe Natalie miscounts and attacks the Arcus with one energy less. And that's how you win the game. I don't know. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> you're, you're getting there, Pablo. I'm yeah, slowly but surely. Yeah. <laughs> Three cards off the Siona for Andrew. Two for Natalie. He has access to Nestash, which I believe is going to be used for the first time. Let's go. There we go. You finally got your way. All right. What, what's the card he needs? Path to a peak. There it is. <sighs> Almost. Close. How about a Giratina <laughs> V? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I think you need to bench it. Um, it's all about the path. Like, yeah. they have boss without path, and that doesn't matter. It's all about the path to the peak. Finding it this turn, there's been two played. I did not see a path there is in, no path in this there. hand. So now Natalie's one Sashen or one energy attachment away from winning this match. Looks like just the Trinity Nova to take the knockout and <laughs> hand of Kirlia Zashian. All right, well. Kirlia Zashian, that spells game over with no path to a peak. If there had been a path to a peak, this could have been a little bit more intricate for Natalie to pull off. If she passes a turn, then it certainly could give Andrew a little bit of hope. But with no path to a peak, Skovit, Skovit was not the hero that we needed today. Listen, if Cleansing Gloves was found, Squavit could take the knockout. I think that's what Andrew was going for. You, yeah, that's... <laughs> that, I mean. No, I'm pretty sure that doesn't work. Cause, uh, yeah, because of oh, the double turbo, Yeah, right? like you're doing zero and then add 30 oh, no, to zero. It does. It does? Okay. Yeah, it does, because when you're multiplying, then it doesn't. But it's base 20 plus 30 but minus it, 20. But what goes first? Because if you're doing zero damage with, like, a choice belt in the past, you, you weren't doing... Right, but it's, it's like if attacks, if it's an attack that doesn't do damage, I'm pretty sure if it's doing damage, then it gets to like add and subtract. I'm, I'm, I think, <laughs> but I, I actually i am not 100% sure Listen, about it, that. Listen, it's not going to come up. Uh, there is the knockout with Trinity Nova, and Natalie has plenty of energy. Look at that, seven energy, I think. That oh. should have been eight, eight, otherwise we wouldn't have had the knockout the previous turn. Like I said, the V-Guard, right? If the V-Guard yeah. was on the Arceus, then maybe that leads to a mistake right here. Yeah, like sometimes playing to your opponent, making a misplay, making a mistake is the way you can potentially win. That double turbo on the Skovit was very pretty, but not very useful. And with that, Natalie Miller moving on to 6-1-1 one, and, one, and punches her ticket into day two here at NEIC. Indeed, with a very original Carnivore EX list, which yeah. most lists are looking fairly similar. Um, it's the same attackers, the same uh, backup Pokemon, the same support Pokemon, but extra consistency in the form of an extra V Pokemon, an extra Four Steel Stone, and extra ways to combat Path to Peak whilst giving yourself card advantage, right? Sometimes if you have a lot of stadiums, you get to